When we delve into history, Japan has repeatedly found itself in the perilous embrace of earthquakes and tsunamis. Over the past 1,300 years, nearly 143 tsunamis have struck Japan, with the most dangerous occurring in 1741, featuring tsunami waves towering up to 90 feet. Sadly, as time progresses, the threat of tsunamis in Japan seems to be on the rise. Just in 2022, 300 earthquakes with a magnitude greater than 7.0 were recorded. On March 11, 2011, an earthquake with a magnitude of 9.1 struck beneath the sea, 72 kilometers east of the Oshika Peninsula. It continued for a staggering six minutes, giving rise to a massive tsunami. This marked the world's fourth largest earthquake and the largest in Japan's recorded history. The tsunami waves raced towards the city of Sendai at speeds of up to 700 kilometers per hour, reaching up to 10 kilometers inland from the coast. On the other side, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant failed, resulting in a catastrophic nuclear disaster compounding the devastation. This tsunami is considered the most expensive disaster in the world, causing an estimated damage of $235 billion. Now, the question arises, why does Japan always find itself in the grip of tsunamis? The primary reason lies in Japan's geographical location. This entire area of the Pacific Ocean you are observing, known as the Pacific Ring of Fire, accounts for approximately 90% of the world's earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis. In 1896 and 1933, devastating typhoons struck Japan's Taiyonami villages. However, after these disasters, these villages became exemplars of coastal defense systems. Japan constructed 2.4 kilometers long and 10 meter high double walls along the coast, significantly mitigating the impact of the sea waves. Subsequently, similar structures were built along Japan's second coastal states. Nonetheless, the tsunami of 2011 proved to be larger than these walls could withstand. The sea walls, initially constructed at a mere height of 8 meters to fend off tsunami waves, provided a degree of protection. However, after the 2011 earthquake, Japan decided to elevate and extend these seawalls further. Along the eastern coast, a 400-kilometer long and 15-meter high barrier is planned. To facilitate this project, an artificial tsunami was generated with the help of a vibrator, replicating the pattern of the 2011 earthquake. Calculations were conducted to determine the required height and length of these barriers, based on the size of the waves they would encounter. It's important to note that the 2011 tsunami did not directly impact Japan. Instead, it traveled further afield, mainly because the sea walls had partially dissipated the wave's pressure. Following extensive testing on simulators, the sea walls are now designed to withstand such pressures. To break the wave's pressure, Japan not only built walls, but also constructed breakwaters in the sea near hotspot locations. When the waves approach the coast, the breakwater dissipates its pressure first followed by the 15-meter-high seawalls. Japan is also aware that these seawalls do not offer a permanent solution. The rising global warming is gradually increasing sea levels. Typhoons are intensifying, and earthquakes have become a common occurrence. Japan understands that these man-made structures can't provide 100% protection from natural disasters. By investing $12 billion, Japan has essentially bought time for its people. So, when these seawalls eventually break the wave's pressure, there will be enough time for people to evacuate safely. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and subscribe to Wonderful Stories. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next amazing video.